I'll start from some theory admitted by Umar and Lemurin. Um, so I'll speak about surface plasmons in the Iraq model for graphene. Uh, this is more or less the same in the stock papers that we have seen in the morning. Uh, and so we, I'll speak about the Iraq model. This is this sort of uh, quantum field theory model uh, where there is an electromagnetic field in the 3 plus 1 dimensions which interacts with, uh, with the fermion field in 2 plus 1 dimensions. This is sort of table size brain wolf scenario. And um, this is well known, uh, um, well known uh, action for quantum electrodynamics. The, the only difference is that we have these integrals here uh, over three space time dimensions, and this shows that the, <laughs> that the fermions are living on the place of, uh, of say, uh, graphene. And this is the free part, and the interaction part. Um, <laughs> So and here we introduce these gamma matrices, which are multiplied by this metric tensor, where uh, the velocity of speed inside of graphene enters. This is one. This is 300 times less than the speed of light in the back uh, We can integrate out the, the fermions and have this effective action, and then we can forget about quantum field theory and just consider the scattering of electromagnetic field. And this, this induced current defined by the polarization tensor. And these are standard, standard notations in electrodynamics. Just, uh, well, I have to say that the polarization tensor is, uh, has zero components when human calls, calls it free. Just, this is just manifesting that we have uh, a plane where the fermions are defined. And then we pass to, um, pass to the uh, polarization operator in momentum representation. This is well-known uh, loop diagram. And uh, the only difference from the normal quantum electrodynamics is that because of these uh, three integrations over momenta, is diagram is not divergent, it's convergent. Here we have uh, the, same, uh, the same propagators in quantum electrodynamics. And well, again, <coughs> here we have these gamma matrices, uh, and some of them multiplied by the velocity of light and graphene. Uh, and, well, two, this is given for zero chemical potential if we want to generalize the and then zero, zero chemical potential, we have to add uh, mu, just add mu to this uh, Q0 moment. Uh, there, well, we can pose the reflection problem and then we'll have the uh, reflection coefficients for transverse electric and transverse magnetic polarization defined through the components of the uh, polarization tensor. So what is important that we can express everything in E0, 0, 0 component and this trace. Um, so, when we are speaking about surface plasmons, we need to know the poles of the reflection coefficients. We have to solve these kind of equations and um, to find the, the range where the surface plasmons exist, uh, we just have to look carefully at all the square roots and the expression, and so this give, give us, this, uh, in general, this is widest possible range in the setup, but then we'll, we'll see that when we add chemical potential or temperature, this region may, may change. And well, there is also the definition of the conductivity in terms of polarization tensor. I will not speak about it. I think there will be a talk related to this uh, tomorrow. Um, some figures. Originally, the Dirac model was formulated for massless graphene, well, this is natural because uh, we suppose that near direct point there uh, have massless fragments, but well, there are some physical conditions where the mass gap, gap para parameter should not be neglected. Uh, for example, when we have uh, graphene uh, 
placed on some substrate. These are the numbers of the mass gap parameter. And well, without any substrate, if we have some impurities, the, this mass gap may be like microelectron holes. Um, and uh, further, I will speak about two cases. First, I'll tell how we study the surface plasmons at zero temperature, no zero mass gap, and zero chemical potential. And the second case, uh, it is finite temperature, zero mass gap, but zero chemical potential. And we'll see that there is some, uh, some something is um, very similar in these two cases. Uh, well, a little bit uh, quantum electrodynamics again. Well, we, we study only one loop uh, polarization tensor because, well, actually uh, there are many calculations. I just want to add this one. This is this was done. Uh, the, this is the calculation of the corrections to the uh, conductivity of graphene uh, in two loop approximations. Th these are the diagrams that enter, and you can see that this is this is the corrections correction to the one loop uh, uh, conductivity. And so, though the fine con uh, structure constant here is more than two, but anyway, we can say that the correction is more or less small. And so we, in our consideration, we study only this, the first, uh, the one loop, uh, the first term, it means that we study only one loop polarization uh, this, uh, the Another generalization is to consider finite temperature. To this end, we introduce temperature in our quantum field theory using standard Montebar formalism, just uh, replacing integrations by so the summation of Montsubara uh, frequencies and uh, well, make the substitution and then uh, this is the replacement in all the formulas and we get the um, uh, definition of the uh, polarization tensor at finite temperature and then, uh, well, these are some properties of the polarization tensor, I don't know much about it. Uh, then these are, so, now I show all these uh, not so beautiful formulas. Uh, this is first we start with the case when we have zero temperature, no zero mass, and no zero um, chemical potential. This is the answer for this for the functions Q, uh, which enter the reflection coefficients. Well, the, these expressions follow expressions follow directly from the polarization tensor. And well, you see there are several square roots again, and the, um, the expressions depend on uh, the mass on the chemical potential. And uh, well, these are this is for transverse electric polarization and for transverse magnetic one. Mm. And you see there are different uh, definitions for chemical potential larger than mass gap and the chemical potential smaller or equal to mass gap. Actually, there is no, no small transition. And you know what follows? We can see the case uh, when the chemical potential, the potential is larger than the mass gap. solutions exist. Oh, I pull back. Uh, uh, to find the plasmonic region, we have to study carefully all these squ square roots. And so we see that for the case when the uh, chemical potential is not equal to zero and mass is not equal to zero, we have this, this uh, region. Well, with, uh, this is the so-called so um, threshold of pair creation, and uh, and this is just the, uh, the um, this function uh, found from well, this is found exactly from the square root. Just we we demand that this is not non-negative, and then you solve this with respect to the frequency and find this, this expression for the, for the frequency which defines the plasmonic region for, for this problem. 
and this is the same picture but in sort of other coordinates. Just I wanted to show that this was more the plasmonic region. Mm -hmm. This is uh, this is sort of wedge, and uh, it is uh, bounded from from the top by this curve, even by this formula. And uh, so this is this is the case when the mass is equal to zero and the um, chemical potential is not. Uh, you see that in this case the plasmonic region degenerates to this sort of triangle and here we have uh, for this, these are solutions for two polarization this is for transverse magnetic polarization this is for transverse electric one this is just these are different values of the couple constant constant just plotted for fun well this is the physical value and um, here here is the transverse, very tiny transverse electric plasmon announced in this paper in 2007. And then we study what happens if we introduce non-zero mass gap. Then the, uh, well, there is a zoo of solutions, like the PSS second, second branch for transverse magnet magnetic solutions uh, solution, and well, the, the picture becomes more complicated. Uh, this is uh, uh, in, in what follows. I will uh, I will compare the pictures for non-zero temperature and non-zero mass gap. And here I just give some formulas for the case of non-zero temperature. In, for non-zero temperature, we can again we return back to the polarization tensor. Now we put uh, we equal to zero, but the temperature is non-zero. We can divide the polarization tensor general polarization tensor in zero temperature part and the part dependent on the temperature. And so we introduce this function for this zero zero component component and then and the trace. And well these are again the the different the definitions for, for the zero temperature part. This is the exactly the formulas that we for the zero part that we had in zero temperature case with zero uh, zero chemical potential. And uh, well, for the temperature dependent part, we have this function the J, and uh, then <coughs> these are the temperature dependence enters through this exponent as usual. and. Um, Again, we have to follow carefully the signs. Um, yesterday, Galina informed um, me that we have an error in this in this formula. Well, in our paper, by in this transparency, I corrected this. Yeah, this is sign. Is, well, this is the correct sign. But luckily, uh, exactly this region doesn't play any role. Is ne this inequality is never satisfied in the plasmonic region. That is why the, uh, what I have calculated later is correct, luckily. Um, so then we, again, we study the, these functions Q, which enter the reflection coefficients. And to, well, what we are interested in uh, is to find the region where the surface plasmons exist at zero temperature. Here we see that. Um, well, we can see uh, um, the pictures that uh, the um, plasmonic region is defined totally by the zero temperature part. This is again this uh, this frequency omega, which goes like uh, uh, here, and so and this is the, the dark yellow region that is uh, totally defined by the zero temperature part. So we can see that the um, in the case of uh, zero uh, chemical potential and non zero temperature, the region where we can look for surface plasmons is the same as in the zero, uh, zero temperature case. So, and now come the, comes the comparison between two cases when we have non zero chemical potential and non zero temperature. So here is, well, we can say that uh, first that the start from the transverse electric solutions. Transverse electric solutions have um, a starting point. <coughs> it depends on the parameter uh, either mu or the or 
temperature and everything is plotted in the units of mass, I guess. And so uh, the, in the case of, of finite temperature calculation, we see that the starting point of the source electric problem never exists this uh, line, which is that uh, called this threshold of the equation. And well, for some, for some numbers, uh, we can say that we have this mass gap which is uh, given by this figure uh, the temperature equal 1 corresponds to room temperature mm, and this, these are the plots uh, for the surface plasmas themselves again we have uh, they, are, they are all in the regions defined above and here this is the case when, when we have zero temperature and I calculated I uh, calculated and plotted for different <coughs> values of uh, chemical potential, you see that we have uh, the starting point and the end point, and uh, the, all the plasmons end up at this omega plus minus frequency. Um, just uh, in, this, uh, in this plot, it, its frequency depends on mu, that, that is why we have different, different end points here. And well, the, start, the starting point also depends on mu, and uh, uh, the picture look, looked more or less um, similar in the case of uh, zero chemical potential and non zero temperature. The difference, the, the important difference is that for non zero temperature, we have the end point always lying on the, um, this threshold of the equation, and the smaller the temperature, uh, uh, the lower the starting uh, starting point of the of the solution, and we can say that uh, when the temperature increases, the starting point uh, approaches the end point, and finally the, the plasma vanishes. So we can say that within, with, when the temperature increases, the uh, transfer electric plasma, in the case of zero chemical potential, vanishes. <coughs> These are some preliminary conclusions. Uh, zero temperature, there is a starting point lying on omega equal to A and an end point lying on this frequency defined by our formulas. Uh, even when we have a mass gap going to zero, then the surface, the transverse electric surface plasma <coughs> survives. We can find this analytic solution the solution analytically and for the temperature which is larger than, than zero there is a starting point which again lies on the same line but then point lies on the threshold of the equation and uh, while at room temperature the solution is really tiny. Um, we can even calculate uh, numerically the, the maximum temperature when the solution almost disappears. Just numerically, we can put simultaneously this, uh, solve this uh, equation with omega equal to k and omega equal to omega s simultaneously, and this gives maximal temperature for which the surface plasma source electric polarization exists, but on the plots, we cannot see it uh, even to the temperature like 2.25. This is sort of for the best quality of this plot. Uh, now I move to one source magnetic plasmons. This is the case of, well, relatively, I would say, uh, small temperatures and small, uh, mass, uh, small chemical potential. Um, this plot shows the TM plasmon for zero temperature and on zero chemical potential. You see that we have the start point and the, the end point, which, is light, which lies on this um, straight line. Uh, <coughs> which is uh, momentum, momentum times uh, the velocity of light in, in graphene. And again, we see that the, well, not again, but it just here, we see, we see that the larger the chemical potential, the, the longer the solution is, the chemical potential goes, goes to zero, the transverse uh, magnetic uh, plasma disappears. And uh, if, uh, if we, Continue, continue increasing the 
uh, is due, then uh, finally the, uh, the, the solution will, be, will end up at this curve and there will appear the second branch which is not on this plot. And again, uh, well, then coming to the case of non-zero temperature and zero chemical potential, we again see that there is a starting point and the end point. Actually, this end point can be calculated, but there is an analytic formula for that. And I mean, the, the behavior is more or less uh, uh, similar in the gain if we continue increasing the temperature. Well, here, this is how it looks. Finally, we increase, increase the temperature. The, the plasma ends up at this uh, threshold of the equation above the solution becomes uh, complex and so that we cannot call it anymore the surface plasma. This is, uh, well, this is the conclusion. Just uh, remember what I have said. Just, uh, again, the things that I have told already. Uh, we have at non-zero temperature, we have uh, we we uh, see that the transverse magnetic plasmon appears, which was absent when uh, u was equal to zero and t was equal to zero. And in some sense, here the temperature, the temperature and the chemical, uh, the temperature works like chemical potential. Then uh, the difference, the regions where the the surface plasmons exist uh, at non-zero temperature and non-zero chemical potential are similar but different. This uh, at zero temperature we had broader region. Um, then uh, we can say that with increasing temperature the transverse electric plasma disappears uh, while the simultaneously the transverse magnetic plasma emerges and this can say that we absorb sort of pumping energy between different modes and um, so the investigation is needed for both on zero temperature and on zero mu. Uh, well, so as we, at least for metals, we believe that the behavior, well, the, the, the Casimir force at short distances is defined by the surface plasmas. Well, of course, it is of interest to uh, have some numerical calculations for interact, interacting surface plasmons uh, with two, two uh, graphene sheets. Unfortunately, this is not as easy as for pure metals because we have more parameters and we have, well, the, the formulas are uh, slightly more complicated. Thank you for your attention. Galina. Perhaps the right word is not surface plasmons, but 2D plasmons. Uh, surface plasmons has a yes, predefined yes, benefit. Right. Yes, you're, you're right. Nice work. But, but you're saying you can't analytically do the Casimir interaction because it's too complicated. Is that the yes, that's story so far? Yes. I'm not surprised. Yeah. Well, Fair enough. Hi. Um, so I'm actually intrigued by one of the your last block where you say that the surface plasma stop with the temperature and the solution become complex. You mean this? Uh, you are showing, yeah, here. You're saying that actually the solution become complex. So here I imagine it's, if I correctly understood, please correct me if I'm wrong, if you hit the fair creation threshold, right? Yes. So in this case, graphene becomes dissipative. So it's like uh, it's, there is some dissipation in the material. Is can be that the solution that you have when you 
cross the risk threshold and when it becomes complex it's the equivalent of a plasma in this fatty material. Yes, I think so. Uh, but this, in this case you can still call it plasma. Well, there are, uh, there are some papers uh, well, from the solid state community uh, when, they, when they have plots uh, showing the uh, in some cases, they, they show the plot like uh, the solid line in this region and uh, something like uh, not so solid in the uh, re uh, region above uh, above this uh, threshold. Well, yes, it means that there is a dissipation, and well, it depends on your definition. If if you're looking just exactly for that case, then I was not. I didn't study the what happens to so that because it was harder. I just did what I, what I could for the moment. One well, last question, Tom. I have a technical question. So you said that the one loop polarization diagram is not divergent. Mm -hmm. Then later, I think I heard you say that you use dimensional regularization. Mm -hmm. So why do you need no, to regularize? That was not, first of all, that was not myself who, <laughs> who did that. Uh, that well, then, yeah. So here, the, this, this diagram, this is, this is Convergent. Well, well, if you if you use the well, well, there are there are contributions that cancel actually in, uh, in the well because of this uh, we have this uh, reintegration. But you if you just substitute this momentum and then you just count start counting the momentum, you see that it is still you have three three powers on the top and two powers on the bot bottom. Then it seems divergent, but there are cancellations. And and here. Uh, when you have mm, two, uh, when when you have two loops, the, the, you have to calculate these divergent subgraphs, and there you need the dimensional. Well, not necessarily dimensional, but just this uh, this calculation was done in dimensional regularization. So this is just to 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 calculate these uh, these divergent subgraphs. Well, let's thank you. Yeah. Yeah.